All right, Dale Little here with Rescue American Ministers. And um, get my thing adjusted here. Um, I wanted to talk to you just a few minutes and try to um, clear some things up. <clears throat> uh, there's some people that you just can't reason with. It's not going to clear anything up. But I want to look at some scripture over in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. That is... <clears throat> Uh, becoming one of the most misinterpreted scriptures in the Bible, I think. I uh, used to say that uh, Proverbs 23, um, 7, I think, was. Uh, and it is misquoted as, it's misquoted this way. He, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Or as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, either one of those is wrong. It's, um, <clears throat> and so um, you have to read the first verse before and the verse after. Um, to get the proper understanding. Uh, that's all you need to read, just the verse before and after to give you a more proper understanding of what that verse is talking about. It's not talking about good self-esteem, thinking good of yourself. No, it's talking about sitting down to eat with someone. Uh, go read it. Proverbs 23. I think it's uh, verse 6, 7, and 8 uh, to, to put it all together. And um, it's talking about sitting down to maybe make a business deal with someone. And this man has, uh, this someone has ill will toward you, possibly. But you sit down with him. And uh, the caution is, no, don't sit. Be careful sitting with that man. Because he may do what's in his heart. In other words, he may be thinking of doing you evil. And he may do what is in his heart. That is what that verse is saying. It has nothing to do with as a man thinketh, so is he. Because the scripture says just the opposite is true. As a man is, so will he think. That's what Jesus said. What comes out of the mouth comes out of the heart. So is Jesus wrong? Or is Proverbs wrong? Well, no, your interpretation of it's wrong is what's wrong. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, the same situation here with um, in Second uh, Peter... <clears throat> Um, I hear it all the time. People talk about a thousand years is one day. One day is a thousand years. That is what the scripture says. But let's look and see what it's really saying and what it's meaning. Now, I'll start, um, I'll read most of the chapter mm. to try to give some clarity to this. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir um, up your pure minds by way of remembrance that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of the God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, let me read that again. Every love, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should have come to repentance. But the day, in verse 10, verse, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away. With a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Uh, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Let's stop there. And uh, I've got a couple questions here for you. Um, one thing, uh, when Peter wrote this, if um, hmm. a thousand years was as one day, then people want to apply this to all, anything to do with prophecy that they determine they want to use it with. 
In other words, you put this thousand years, if something says it's a day or or it's a, <clears throat> a year, you you multiply that by a thousand and, you, you know, you get the, um, the proper interpretation of when this is supposed to be coming about. Whatever it is, doesn't matter which prophecy, just ever which one you want to pick out. Someone did say it only applies to the prophecies in Revelation. Um, it, you know, it's just whatever you want um, to say. And uh, they say, well, they've talked to many theologians and they've studied. Well, <clears throat> listen, the Protestant movement started many years ago because um, it was believed that common man could read the Bible for themselves and interpret it with Holy Spirit's help. Didn't need a pope, didn't need a uh, theologian. Now, I'm not th saying that it's theologians are bad to, to read after. I love to read commentaries. I, I like to read after theologians. But they're not the final say. Um, and it depends on, you know, which theologians you're reading after because you got all kinds of different, they all differ. Different denominations, whatever, you know, they differ. So which one do you follow? Um, I just try to stick with the Word of God the best I can. Uh, and so, <clears throat> here, why, why, is, why is that verse even in here? Stop, listen to it. Um, for this they willing or ignorant, talking about where the, when's this promise coming? Well, if, if, if it's going to be at least a thousand years, if he's saying, well, tomorrow the rapture is going to take place. Oh, oh well, at, you know, one day is a thousand years. So, um, that a thousand years from today will be the rapture. Well, why, why is Peter wasting his time telling this group here back in the, New Testament period. What's that to them? A thousand, you know, it's going to be a thousand years from now. Well, why is he wasting his time telling them, you know, to be careful what manner of life you're living because of this prophecy here, because of this scripture um, that he's just read. Friend, what this is, if you will read this, read it a few times over and over. It is simply a way of saying that God is eternal. Time does not mean the same thing to him as it does to us. It's not saying this is a pattern to use to determine prophecy. Nowhere does it say that. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that. Nowhere in Scripture does it even hint at that. It is simply saying that time doesn't matter to God. Time is... <laughs> It matters to us. You know, these things were given to signs, you know, someone said, signs in, in the sky. And, well, yes, they were. Um, when the seasons change, you know, they change, and for other events. But uh, uh, why is this, why is this even in here? It doesn't have anything to do with what Peter is talking about. Talking about where is the promise of his coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, that's verse 4, all things continue as they were in the beginning of the creation. For this they willing or ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was then was being overflowed with water perished. To heaven and the earth which are now the same word kept in store, reserved in the fire against the day of judgment and perdition. Um, and if you leave that verse out, verse 8, it's the next verse. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. If, if you just take that, just hold your hand or finger over that verse or whatever, like it's not there and read that. It goes, um, the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. Not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Now, it, you take that whole verse out, it doesn't change anything if it's saying anything other than what I just said it was saying. That time is meaningless to God. Time was put here for a man because we need time management. <laughs> we need to know when it's time to get up and go to work and when it's time to go to bed and get some rest. God doesn't need that. He doesn't need rest. Uh, he doesn't need light. He is the light. 24 hours a day. So what, what, what does he need time for? Um, it was for our benefit. 
And so when he's talking about a thousand years uh, as one day, and one day is a thousand years, he's simply saying, and Peter is simply saying there, that one day is nothing to God. A thousand years is nothing to God. It has nothing to do with interpreting Scripture. Show me anywhere, show me anywhere that it says that, or, you know, it tries to say that. I know Daniel 70 weeks, 70th week, and uh, the 70 weeks in Daniel, yes, they are prophetic, and they stand for years instead of days. But that's because of the way the language is written in there. Uh, the, the literal um, saying is that um, the 77s, so 70 weeks is you know, the way it's interpreted. Um, it's literally seven years. But it has nothing to do with this scripture um, about a thousand years being as one day. As I've said before, why do they always only want to add a thousand years to one day? Why don't you look at, hey, it says both, doesn't it? Hey, let's, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. But when people want to interpret, they only want to, they take half that verse out and they only use the one part. A thousand years is as one day. Well, what happened to one day is with the Lord is a thousand years? You know, I mean, is it never interpreted in any way? Um, you know, is it not the end or end of anything? Why is it there? <laughs> Actually, neither one of them speak about it. A means of interpreting prophecy. It's simply saying time is nothing to God like it is to man. Uh, we think about, you know, a thousand years being a long time. God's been in existence for eternity, so a thousand years is nothing to Him. Um, one day, you know, it's like that or more. I, not even a, can't even. Uh, manufacture an amount of time that that would be so quick um, that one day if it's like a thousand years and, and compared to eternity what's one day compared to eternity it's nothing um, that's the point not that you use this verse to interpret scripture and interpret prophecy you come up with all kind of wild ideas now, I'm not here to tell you what you have to believe and how you have to interpret Scripture. I can tell you how you should be because I am a servant of God. I have been called of God. Now, people may get upset with me and they just take me as just one more voice out here, just, you know, calling out like they did John the Baptist. I'm not comparing myself to him in that, except in that manner. Um, you know, people just uh, ignore you, uh, but they didn't continue to ignore John the Baptist. They eventually came out and started listening to him. And um, you do good to listen to the man of God. But no, we've got people today that come out of the woodworks all over Facebook and uh, social media of any kind, YouTube. And, and they're all of a sudden, they have become Bible scholars. The Bible itself says that not many of you should become teachers because you're going to be held to a higher standard. Friend, if you're spouting some of this stuff off that you don't know what you're talking about or that you've just made up so you can sound like you know something, then one day you're going to have to stand before Jesus Christ. You're going to have to give an account for all this stuff you've said and led people in the wrong way and led them astray. And while we're peeling and um, we're concerned about this stuff, see, that has a bearing. And I guess to some extent, you might come back and try to throw this on me too, but it's, it's not going to work. I mean, you, you can think it does. I'm doing this because the truth of the Word of God. 
I don't know why some of you out there is spouting this stuff off about a thousand years and you know you have to add that this and then you come up with some other figures and you add those and you divide this and all this and you come up with answers then uh, through your superior intellect and uh, superior knowledge of the Word of God and, and uh, all these other things uh, that nobody else could figure out. Um, boy, it makes you a wizard. Uh, oh, well, I guess you think you're an angel, but yeah. Anyway, um, somebody has to stand in and say it's wrong. God still does call men and women to speak truth. And if you're not one of them, you need to stay out of this business. Like I say, I'm not telling you what you have to do. I'm telling you what you should do from the Word of God. If you've been called, if God has called you, then just continue on. Uh, it, this is not for you. But if you, you've just stepped out there on your own and decided, hey, this is something you want to do and, and you're qualified to do it, hey, you better watch out. Um, I, I'm just you know, trying to get some clarity in this. It's no wonder that the book of Revelation is so difficult for many people. And it was for me for a long time. It still is somewhat. But I'm just, uh, I'm in the midst of teaching through it. I, actually, I started teaching on the last days, a lot of times, and, and I've started way back in the book of Joel, and I've read numbers of books in the Bible uh, leading up to this to get to the book of Revelation so I'd have a better understanding of what I got here. I've, you know, Joel, Michael, uh, Michael, um, and um, um, Zechariah, Zephaniah, uh, the, over into the, the uh, New Testament, Thessalonians, and other places where it talked about the rapture. Um, and so uh, I finally got to the book of Revelation. I mean, chapter 19 now hoping to finish up for too long but i had to get this message out i felt like uh and take a break and uh just uh, to get this out there because there's so much of this stuff and and you try to talk to people and they, well, who do you think you are you don't know anything I, I know more than you do i've been studying the bible 10 15 years um <laughs> and i will come back and uh, tell them a little bit about my studies and uh, my um time that I've spent in the Word of God and, and uh, relying on the Holy Spirit primarily. Yes, I consult some good commentaries um, and others as things that passages are a little difficult to understand. But some are not difficult to understand. That This is one of them. It is not difficult to understand that this is just a way of saying that time with God is not the same as it is with mortal man. Uh, we've been here a few days on this earth. So, a thousand years uh, oh, seems like forever. If we could even live that long with down here. And we'll one day, but not right now. But, as I said, why would Peter waste his time even mentioning this to these people he was writing to if it was going to be a thousand years away? Why didn't he go ahead and tell them that? It's not for at least another thousand years. Don't worry about it because a thousand years is a, or one day is a thousand years. He didn't. And it's a waste of, it's a waste of time for you people to be out there. Uh, let me put it this way. It, why is it a waste of time? Uh, arguing for this point that you have on this. Because people are dying and going to hell. Nations are starting to die, and they're going to hell. The Bible says that all nations will come against God, come against God's people. And that's starting to happen. While we're busy arguing over something like this, because that's the way Grandma taught, that's the way great-great-grandma, uh, great-great-grandpa, and, and on back down through the line, I, that's what they always taught. That must be right. <laughs> Sorry. Look at this, I beg of you. Read it again with open eyes. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you what it really means. 
But we're in John, for, I think, chapter 14. Jesus, before he went away, said, I'll send you a comforter. He'll bring to your remembrance those things that I have uh, spoken to you. You know, I got to thinking on that scripture one day, and I thought, well, what, you know, does that speak to me, or is that just for the disciples? If it speaks to me, what, what has God said to me uh, that he can bring to my remembrance? And, oh, man, it, I, it's, it's happened so many, 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 many times since then that I just ask God for his help and understanding. And the Holy Spirit brings to my remembrance something I'd read before or something I had read maybe even years ago uh, that will fit right in with what I'm asking help on. So why don't you rely on him instead of all these commentators and these uh, theologians. Um, they're not always right. Okay, I'm going for 20 minutes, just a little over, so I think that's enough for today, and uh, we hope you'll take this into consideration. I, I'm not trying to bully people. Uh, I'm just telling you straight from the Word of God what the Word of God says and why it says it. That's my calling, and that's what I will continue to do. Dale Little, Rescue America Ministries.